Hey everybody, FP here. In this video I want to quickly go over everything I've learned testing ZG on PTR. So let's begin. First thing you gotta do is stock up on Noggin Fogger for its slow fall. This farm is not heavy on backspace, so you can fill half of your empty inventory slots with consumables. In addition to Noggin Fogger, bring mana and health pots and fuel lips just to be on the safe side on day one. Another useful item to bring are the DM East Poggling Seeds, but after you learn the pools you will not need them. I consider having Epic Mountain a definite must in this farm, but you may be able to get away without it. This jump here is a new addition to my farming route, it's also the sole reason why I'm going with Noggin Foggers. You can choose to skip the jump and instead use Mage's Fall without this pack. As a general note, never buy feathers that are over 30 silver each. This debuff add-on is called Thread Plates and I will link it down below. We have to know precise moment when Frost Nova is about to break to maximize shatter damage of Flame Strike Cone of Cold combo. If we use Flame Strike too soon, there is a chance that some of our targets will remain frozen and that will mess up their grouping. On the other hand, if we Flame Strike too late, we lose the higher critical chance of our burst. Ideally, you want to start casting Flame Strike when you see 4 seconds remaining on the debuff. You will need to practice this jump many times before you figure it out. If you miss the jump or pull the packs on the left, do not worry, as what I'm about to show you is how you reset aggro with crocs. This shortcut is the same path we would take if we had cleared the triple pack correctly. It completely eliminates the need to cross the bridge and go all the way around and deal with those annoying patrols. When it comes to this next double crock pull, there simply isn't enough flat room to maneuver around here, so I decided to try pulling them up the hill and it worked out to be the best option. This is the pull where you can use your DME East podling if you are undergeared, but for some leeway reason, strafing out of Ice Block Frost Nova pull makes you least likely to be hit. Backpaddling out of Ice Block Frost Nova pull is never a good idea. Additionally, if you didn't know, moving or jumping while casting AoE spells was proven to increase the range of your short range spells. So you see, we are not spurgs when we jump around like we are having a seizure, it's just a mechanic of classic. This specific pull is tricky because there are two patrols you have to keep your eyes on, one is a big dude and the other are the snakes you may have noticed at the start of the pull. If you're not lucky enough to miss those patrols, pull this pack either down from where you came from or move towards the wall. We are finally taking a brief break from crocs and we are dealing with these tigers. Circle around to group them as best you can, but do not flame strike on the first shatter. Use Kono Cold twice to lower the health of cubs before committing to burst. Reason being that small cubs run away when they're low and you want to make sure your flame strike cone of cold nearly kills them else they will scatter around and chain pull the pack next to them. You may have noticed that I'm using Blade of Eternal Darkness, it took me 909 kills and 3 weeks of grinding to get it. The biggest benefit of the blade for me is that I can avoid using mana pots during AoE grinds, Blackwing Lair, Suppression Room or dogs in Molten Core. Dagger becomes very OP when you want to do more advanced pulls, at around 10% proc chance you need at least 40 targets for Arcane Explosion to recover its cost and have the so called infinite mana. Blade is amazing for its mana region feature, but it's not necessary for these types of small pulls. If you're having trouble with the tiger pull, you can always pull small cubs on their own, just be careful until you learn at what point they all chain pull. Back to crocs for the final pool, these are the two packs by the lake and they are much easier to kill up here. On the flip side, as this is the final pool before we reset the raid, feel free to take out the cups and then pull both croc packs and all tigers at once. 
After the crocs are dead, as a herbalist you would scout for herbs and if not, then it's time to reset the raid and do it all over again. It's important to note that if you kill any boss in Zolgorab you lose the ability to reset it. My strategy is to keep farming until the very last day and then find the proper raid to kill bosses for their awesome loot. As an alliance player I tested how long it takes to reach Yohamba Isle and as you will see in a minute it's far superior to take Westfall flight path from Stormwind. But when it comes to reaching Zolgorab on the other hand, the Duskwood flight path is faster. This is the Elementalist Frostfire spec that I'm using uh, without the single target talents. Let's quickly go over how you should approach using Bijus and coins. After you break a Biju at this altar or hand in the three coins, you gain 75 reputation with the Zandalari tribe and receive this rep token. If you decide to use the token, you will get an additional 50 reputation. Little heads up, as you should not be using the rep token, it's a currency that you will need until the end of Classic. To min-max the reputation farm and eliminate the need to go back to this content later on, you should be aware of your own shoulders upgrade path. For me, I will be enchanting these four shoulders. Every shoulder enchant will cost you 15 reputation tokens, so I will be breaking at least 60 bijus during my grind to exalt it and save the tokens in the bank. Rep token is also currency for this food and these amazing elixirs. We will use the elixirs until the end of classic as they stack with all other types of consumables, which means we have to break even more bijus. Let me end the video on this final note. Even though Zolgorab is supposed to be this huge gold farm for us, I believe price of bijus will crash to as low as 2 gold each, even on day 1, at which point I will be buying them in bulk and saving them to flip them later in the classic. That's my final tip of the video. Thank you so much for your support, leave a like and subscribe and see you in the next one!